Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Detroit Red Wings franchise mode here in NHL 21. So in last episode we had free agency and we also started up the season and as you can see, we're 5-18-2 to start the season. So not off to a great start, 2-7-1 in our last 10 and I just don't understand why the case is like this team should be a lot better. Like this top line is pretty solid, the second line is pretty solid, the third line is pretty good. Like this part's a bit weak, but like we should not be technically simulating this bad, but we are. So uh, yeah, we're probably going to be making a few trades in this episode, maybe at least one. Just because I would like to get this team probably tanking this year, and then maybe next year we'll come back as a better team. But right now this entire team has just not been good. I do have one comment I'd like to go over before we get into making those trades and stuff like that, and it's from Hawksfan88. He says, I think you should tank this year, reset the team and get a high draft pick. If the team struggles next year, I think you should uh, look into getting a new coach. So we're probably going to be making some trades right now. There's one I definitely want to do for sure. And then looking for a new coach would probably make sense for something to do in the off season. Because let's take a look actually at our current coach because I actually haven't done that um so mr what's his name maxwell homer he doesn't have really a good scheme fit well actually he does to an extent 62 percent but some of the guys i'd like to utilize more don't have really good scheme fits like walls not the greatest and i'd like to utilize him a bit more so we probably want to find a better coach in the offseason like his full career stats he's 169 151 and 13 or 33 not 13 uh, but as you can see, he's not been super great. Like last season was pretty good, but this team just fell off the face of the earth this season. So we might have to look for a new coach and fire this guy. But yeah, one trade I am going to be making in this episode is I'm going to be getting rid of T uh, Tyler Bertuzzi. I was going to say Todd Bertuzzi for a second, but we're going to get rid of Tyler because he's only got one year left, I think. Yeah, he's got one year left, and we do have Garon in a system who I'd like to utilize. So yeah, we're going to try and flip away Bertuzzi just because it'll free up some cap space. Um, another guy I wouldn't mind moving is like somebody like Kubalik. If you guys have any suggestions for trades, let me know because next episode will be pre-recorded probably the day after you guys watch this or two days you get, uh, after you watch this because I'm not recording on Christmas Day. So if you have any suggestions for who to move out, let me know. Because I am open to pretty much moving anybody at this stage to an extent except for like Wall and some of our younger guys. So yeah, let's get into a trade for with Bertuzzi involved. I'd like to try and get a first round pick, but I don't think we're going to be able to. Maybe we could get a second round pick for him, but uh, we're going to have to find a team that actually could take on him. Because he has a pretty big cap hit, I think. He has 6.645, so... Let's see, so Anaheim would be under cap, so we could trade him to Anaheim. I would rather trade him to the Western Conference. They don't really want to give up any picks, though, and do they want to give up prospects? No, they don't. Okay, we want to find somebody that would give up, like, a prospect and maybe a pick, or a pick and or just a prospect in general, because that's more of what we're after right now, because we're kind of like a rebuilder to an extent. I just don't know why this team is not simulating that good. Uh, let's go to a Western team. Colorado would be over cap space, so we'd have to take cap back by quite a bit. Um, Dallas would also be over cap by $2 million. Anybody that wouldn't be over cap? LA. Let's take a look at LA. They do have some prospects, but they're not great ones. Draft pick wise, they don't want to give up their first, but they do want to give up their second. But they'd be over 45 skaters in the organization, so that doesn't work. How about Minnesota? Doesn't look like they have. Yeah, they don't have any prospects on their block. Like I said, I'm more looking to trade them to the west. But I might have to settle with trade them to the east. Um, San Jose has good players, but like they're currently good players. Interesting. How about Tampa Bay, even though they're in east? Nope. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a lot that I could give them to. Vancouver be over salary by how much? By like $4 million. So that's probably not going to happen. Looks like we have to trade him to an Eastern team. So let's see. Any Eastern teams want him? Carolina does. They do want to give up their second rounder. That's interesting. Do they want to give up any prospects? Yes, they do. Okay, we might be able to swing and deal with Carolina. 
How is this Punov's guy? 25 games played in the NHL, 6 points. I don't really need a defenseman, to be honest. I mean, I could take some center prospects. Like, this guy is unsigned at the moment. Looks like a pretty good prospect. He was a ninth overall pick. Hmm. I don't know if it makes sense really for them to do that, but... Looks like more... Uh, they actually have 45 skaters in their organization, so we'd actually have to take back a roster player, which means Punovs might be the only option we could take back. Or we'd... Uh, yeah, we'd probably only be able to take Punovs, so we can't probably make a deal with Carolina. At least that's from my standpoint. Florida... Uh, do they have any players on their block? No, nothing interesting. Draft pick wise, anything interesting? They do have a two third round picks, but I don't really need to take two thirds for Bertuzzi, I don't think. Uh, who else we got here? Montreal would be over cap space by $4 million, which doesn't make sense. New Jersey would be by more. New York Islanders would be under cap space, okay. So we could take the second from the Islanders, or we could take a prospect as well. The Sterling guy might be interesting. He was the 8th overall pick recently. Don't know if he fits our system. Hmm. There's also Jenner. This guy looks pretty good so far as well. Hmm. I don't really know what we need. I mean, I don't think we have actually a lot of right wingers. We do have like guys that are left wing slash right wingers, but we don't have any like designated right wingers really. Maybe we go with Jenner. I don't know if that's too much value though. It might be close. We might have to give up a, like something in this deal. And sorry if you hear the plow out in the background because it's snowing outside with a surprise. Uh, but this might go through. Let's try this. Bertuzzi for Jenner straight up. And that's accepted. Okay. So Bertuzzi has gone to the New York Islanders. So he, where his dad played. That's kind of interesting. And we will call up Garon. Might as well. And let's just make sure that guy that we just traded for is not in the NHL. Okay, good. But yeah, that's a pretty decent trade, I think. Even though Garon's been, like, absolutely insane down there in the AHL, and that first line's been really good, we might as well bring him up to the NHL. He's not really a good fit with this third line, which is kind of problematic, but we could... I think he was a good fit on the fourth line. Uh, no, not really. Hmm. I think I'm going to move him to the second line and then put Kubalik down. So this should help us tank a bit, but we probably will have to make some more deals to make this team even worse. Oh, actually, he's not a good... He's the worst fit, actually, on that second line. His best fit is on the third line and the fourth line, and that's it. Yikes. Hmm. Maybe we will play him as a fourth liner with some, like, power play time. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Because he definitely deserves... Oh, he actually is already on the power play. Okay, good. Yeah, so that's what we'll do. But uh, if you guys have suggestions for other trades, because I don't know if I'm going to make any more in this episode, um, let me know because Tom Wilson's definitely one of those guys we could flip because we only signed him to a one-year deal. It's kind of annoying that this plot just decided to come out of nowhere because I literally just started recording. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, Taze, Wilson, pretty much anybody on this team is almost tradable to an extent. Except for like prospects like Valeno, I wouldn't mind keeping Larkin and Raymond and those type of guys. But I think this team really needs kind of like a retool because I don't know why we're playing so bad. But anyways, Garon is in the lineup. That's good. Let's uh, adjust the AHL quickly. So we will move Weaver up. We will move Kevin Mackey up. Actually, maybe not Kevin Mackey. Kosh is a defenseman. We'll put Soderblom up then. Multi set Wait, Johansson is also a defenseman. Damn, we have all defensemen on that fourth line. Well, this HL team, I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs with defensemen playing forward, but whatever. And let's go to extra attackers quickly and go to three on three. And we'll move Weaver up to the top one and we will throw in. Who do we want to throw in here? Who's not on yet? We'll just throw in Chase Pearson. Why not? But yeah, if you guys have suggestions for trades, let me know because this team definitely needs a retool. We're right around the minimum cap space as well, so we might not be able to make much more trades this uh, season. But let's see how Garon plays for us, and maybe this team could turn a page with Garon instead of Bertuzzi in. But yeah, let's uh, go another month. We're going to probably go until like a day before the trade deadline. That way you guys can see who's on the block and whatnot. 
So the Islanders have Noel Achari on waivers, which I'm not going to claim. Probably just because of that trade with Bertuzzi involved. <laughs> but yeah, this team is doing so bad that I hope we get the first overall pick. Because if we tank so hard and then all of a sudden we just don't get first overall, that's going to be really, really painful. And Bodie Wild, was he ever injured? He was not. Okay, good. But yeah, I'm hoping Garon plays really well with us even if this team is really bad and we're playing good recently well, a lot better than we did the start the season Ethan Bear is injured until January 4th we'll just go replace player but yeah Garon might be helping us out a bit so we've won more games this month than we did the rest of the regular season don't want Claude Giroux and that is it for the month so 11, 23, and 4 okay so we won 6 more games this month so a much better month. Let's take a quick look at those points again. Just because I'm curious on how Garon has been with the NHL team in WoW. 8 points in his first 13 NHL games in a plus 6. And barely any of it's been power play time. Or power play points. So Garon is off to a very good start to his NHL career. I'm really excited for this guy to be honest. Because his offensive stats look really well. Like rounded. So... He's probably going to be more of a second liner, maybe even by next season, or third liner. But yeah, pretty much anybody on this team is expendable at this stage, I think, because I don't think we're going to make the playoffs unless this team can just all of a sudden win every single game down the stretch. Okay, let's go another month. Just because we want to get right to the day before the deadline, then we'll take a look at what's out there on the block. And uh, then you guys could also let me know who you think we should be moving out and whatnot. Because, like I said, I think anybody pretty much is expendable at this point. Except for our young prospects like Vero, Wall, Willinder, um, Zadina, Larkin, Raymond, Valeno, Suzuki, and then Garon for sure. So I think everybody else is pretty much expendable at this stage. Um, a third in Berglund for a third in Andy Androff. No, thank you. Andy Androff's not even really an NHLer. Wall was never injured. But yeah, this is definitely one of the worst seasons I've ever had in a franchise mode with a team that shouldn't be that bad. Because I never had like 30 regulation losses and only 14 wins. Like, I don't know what the problem is. If it's our goaltending, if it's the defense having like inexperience or what. But we're 14-31-4 after having a 40-something win last uh, wins last season. Let's take a look at points again after that month. See how Garon is shaping up. He's got 12 points in 24 games. And he's only a plus 2 now. So he's kind of slowed down. But he's still got a really good shooting percentage. So I'm liking that. Pretty good for a playmaker actually. Um, but yeah. How is the line shaping up? That top line has been horrific. That third line has been really bad. That fourth line has been okay. By comparison. But whew, that top pairing. Really bad for that top pairing. Usually they're a lot better than that defensively. Somehow Ethan Bear is still a plus 7 on this team. But everybody else is really badly minus. And Skinner's been really bad and Jerry's been really bad. So I think, yeah, Manson is one of these contracts we definitely need to let go of because he dropped off a cliff. Like he was brought in as a pretty good defenseman. But then he's now dropped off a cliff and he's a minus 9. He's probably going to be retiring shortly too, I would assume. Okay, let's go to a day before the deadline, and then we can take a look at what's out there on the block. And then that's pretty much where I'll wrap up this episode, because I want your guys' opinions for trades. Like I said, next episode will be pre-recorded, so I will probably pre-record it on, like, Wednesday the 23rd. And then you guys, if you have any suggestions beforehand, please let me know, and I'll make trades, or I'll make those trades happen potentially for that episode. That airs on the 25th. Because I will put out a video on Christmas Day, even though I don't know if anybody will watch it. And we're 18:40 and four. Holy crap! At the trade deadline, that is horrendous. We're definitely like I think we already clinched not making the playoffs. Like we have 40 points on the season. We're not even dead last though. The Kings have 30 points. Hopefully we get first overall this year. Let's take a look at that draft class quickly, actually. We still don't know who the top prospect is, if he's a uh, franchise guy or not. Hopefully he is franchise level. There's also, though, some good consolation prizes, it looks like. Hmm. 
Yeah, there looks like some pretty good prospects this year. So we're definitely going to be getting a good player, I think. But it's just, man, this team. I really thought this team would have been a lot better this season, but no. Okay, so since we're at the deadline, let's take an updated look at player stats. And then we will also take a look at the trading block, what's out there. And yeah, I'll let you guys also know who we're potentially we could move out. So Lurkin, I'd like to keep around. Uh, he is signed, I think, for quite a long-term deal, though seven years which is kind of iffy but i like to keep him around i'd like to keep valeno around taze is definitely expendable suzuki might be expendable even though he is young he is really struggling defensively uh left wing wise kubalik i think is expendable just because he is signed for four years or three years after this and we definitely could free up some cap space sedina is not expendable fogel is definitely expendable Garon is not expendable. He's now a minus seven. Wow, that ran randomly turned a uh, turned away like turned all the way down from a plus six to a minus seven. I mean, he's putting up a lot of points on that fourth line, which I'm really liking. But a minus seven. Uh, Timoshev is definitely expendable. Yeah, he's dropping off a lot too. Mantha is probably expendable. I would assume. How much years does he have left? Two years left. He might be expendable this year. Uh, Lucas Raymond is not expendable. I don't think Tom Wilson's expendable. He's been really bad. I don't know why I brought him in now. Minus 24 on the season. Nick Batan's probably expendable, even though he's a depth guy for us. Wall's not expendable, but he's a minus 23. <laughs> Ethan Bear's probably expendable. Maybe not. Uh, Mord Sider's not expendable. I don't think Wolander's not. Manson definitely is. Bodie Wild, I don't know about. And I don't know about Vero either. And then goalie-wise, both these guys are expendable because they've been really, really bad this season. Like, I don't know why Tristan Jari all of a sudden just decided to play really bad because he had a 927 when he played with us briefly when we acquired from him from Pittsburgh. Last season, he had a 909, but all of a sudden he has an 893, which is really bad. And then Stuart Skinner, I brought him in, and he's playing worse with us than he did in Colorado and Columbus and whatnot. So, well, actually not worse than Columbus. Hmm. Uh, let's take a look at the trading block now and see what's out there just in case there's any prospects that we could acquire for some of these veterans because like I said anybody is pretty much expendable on this team and if you guys have any potential trades let me know down below but there definitely is some prospects that are out there for us to potentially get if we want to move people away the only problem we're going to have to run into is potentially being uh, the minimum cap hit so we might have to take back some salary in trades this wall guy is intri and intriguing but he's got a lot of value which is the only problem unless we wanted to trade away somebody like mantha for him but i don't know if that's even worth it because i don't know how that guy pans out a lot of veterans out there but this team's not going to be a playoff team so we don't really care about these veterans at all I don't even know what the problem is with this team. If it was letting go of guys like uh, Boone Jenner, Joel Armia, that type of thing. Because those guys were really good like defensive kind of players. But uh, like we let them go and all of a sudden this team is really, really bad. Bertuzzi is now on the block by the Islanders after we traded him there, which is kind of funny. So I guess the Islanders must have fell off a cliff after that trade as well. It seems like more veterans are out there on the block instead of prospects, which is not good. Because we're more looking for prospects. But there is some prospects it looks like. But not a whole lot. By comparison to uh, veterans. Hmm. Wow Gustafson's pretty good. I'm surprised he actually panned out. A lot of prospects there in Tampa Bay. Toronto has Taveras out there. But 11 million. And Mitch Marner. Damn Toronto must be having a struggle of a season. Because they're trying to ship out everybody. Or maybe it's just a salary cap. Hmm. Washington has some veterans, and Winnipeg has some more veterans. Okay, let's also take a quick look at... What did I want to take a look at? Hmm. Let's take a look, actually, at our progress reports quickly. Just so we can kind of see what we already have, so you guys know what we want to potentially trade for in terms of prospects. Because we're definitely wanting to trade for prospects. But uh, I'd like to look at what we have in the system first. 
So center-wise for prospects, Alvin Grew might be more of a fourth liner, but he's more of an AHLer, so he's not really anything. We could probably use some centers because I think Sadikov or Laddie, one of the two of them, is not good at face-offs. These guys might not even make it still. So we probably could use a center prospect from any team if we want to make a trade. Uh, Weaver's not growing at all, which is kind of surprising. Hmm. How about right wing wise? Jenner, who we just brought in from the Islanders. He's having a really good year in the AHL. Or not the AHL, the OHL. Hopefully he pans out. And then defensively, we have a decent amount of prospects. Lacerte is up to a 76, so he might be NHL bound like soon. He's having a pretty good year down there in the AHL. Uh, Tuberinen is also growing pretty good, so we do have some good defensive prospects in. I don't think we really need to trade for a defenseman prospect, like Stewart's also on the rise. I think we could probably use more forwards, because goalie-wise, like, Rohan Howes is up to a 78. At 20 years of age, he's off to a flying good start in the AHL. 25-7-5 with one shutout, a 9-13 save percentage, and a 2.29, so... Yeah, this guy might be uh, an NHL goalie by next season, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, Nguyen's also sort of growing. I don't think he's going to reach his elite potential. He's not simulating the greatest in the AHL. He might be more of a trade bait type of guy to add to a deal, because we do have other goalie prospects still, like Elias and Mui, who's not growing, and Lorenz. And I think that's pretty much it for this episode. Is there anything else I want to do quickly? Let's take a look actually at uh, standings for a second. I just want to see what our main problem is with the team. Because this team has just been horrendous. 3.6 goals for for Tampa Bay. Yeah, our offense has been one of the worst in the league. The third worst. Uh, LA has the worst goals for. We uh, are ahead of Minnesota though as well. And then goals against per game. We were the second worst uh, defensive team in the league. San Jose is the worst. Hmm. 3.73. And then our power play is still really bad. 10.8%. And penalty kill is really bad as well. 73%. Everything is really bad for this team. We only have 7 wins in 32 games on home ways. So yeah, anyways guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Detroit Red Wings franchise mode. So in next episode, we will make some trades based on your guys' suggestions as we look to like rebuild this team again because for some reason we're not simulating that well. So let me know what you guys think down below and I'll see you guys next time.